Hey guys, it's Fashion Revolution Day today and it's also the launch of Safia Mini's new book, Slave to Fashion, which is being launched at my favourite pub ever called the Duke of Cambridge and they're the only certified organic pub. You guys know I love this place. Let's go inside. Fair trade looks at the cotton farmer and also now we have a new standard which covers the work as the textile part of it. So we're trying to drive change through consumer awareness and, and, and promoting choice. Do my best to make it sound really appealing and attractive. <laughs> Section 54. <laughs> <laughs> No, but seriously, it's a really important um, move that's happened through the Modern Slavery Act. Please welcome Safia Mini. <laughs> Slave's fashion is a snapshot of, of where we are in the fashion industry globally today. A, a kind of step-by-step -step guide as to what modern slavery is. We think that slavery is a thing of the past, it really is about now. Um, and we all have, whether we're consumers or business or NGOs or running factories um, or fashion designers, we all have a huge role to play. I'm very much hoping that the book will start that debate um, and can really help people to understand the issues more. We, we have huge numbers of laws that protect uh, people against human trafficking, um, against child labour, against sexual harassment, um, against forced overtime and, and bonded labour. But in reality, we have um, huge amounts of, of, of labour exploitation that is modern slavery uh, today uh, that, that people in, in Bangladesh, India and Cambodia face. People who, one would argue, oh, well, they're just working very hard. No, in modern slavery, excessive overtime, working 70 and 80 hours a week with taking only two days off a month if they're lucky, um, is in fact modern slavery. And I think that meeting with the slaves, um, you know, children as young as, as 12 and 15 years old, um, and, and women who have to choose between whether they want to continue working in their factory and they want the chance of promotion, but then forced often to sexual exploitation with their, with their bosses um, so that they can at least keep their jobs and secure their, their incomes going forward. What struck me was just how incredibly vulnerable these women are and how we as consumers have to be their voice. They absolutely have no choice. And that is the system that we're supporting by buying fast fashion without questioning it, by buying from brands who are not, not only not transparent, but are not talking about the two critical things, and one of those is a living wage. Many consumers are, are buying into ethical and fair trade fashion brands, um, brands like the one I created, People Tree, um, that work to welfare trade organisation, fair trade standards. They're also downshifting, downsizing, they're looking at buying less. Um, they're questioning the high street brands, their favourite brands, they're asking them where do their clothes come from. Uh, they're also demanding that the slavery reports uh, uh, that are on their websites have more content. But I think what's really key is that the British government makes a central repository, that there is a charity that's formed that analyses those reports. And if we can harness that engagement and get people to think about how they're consuming, because we have the power to change business, society and the planet through how we consume. I think the section in the book that most resonates with me is uh, meet the slaves and I think uh, for me I, I, have, um, I have a number of civil rings on my hand and, and as I was meeting each person that I interviewed I gave them a ring and with each silver ring I made a promise that I would tell their story and that I would not forget them. The stories that I heard were, were really quite shocking. So Safia's book is very important because not only goes deep into what is a slave and what is the situation but which are the organizations that are trying to implement change on the ground and most importantly it gives a voice to some of the stories of these people that have been trapped in the system. The Fashion Revolution Week, the fourth anniversary of the Rana Plaza uh, tragedy which galvanised the, the, the so-called developed world, the consumers, to put pressure on brands, firstly to, to make them pay compensation but, but secondly to really ask them for transparency and accountability 
to tell us who makes their clothes. And I think transparency is the beginning of a process that allows us to understand that people are being paid not only a minimum wage, um, but also a living wage. I'm really very, very excited about today because of the, the huge need to remember people that were victims of, 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 of something that was catastrophic um, and, and hoping that the change will continue um, and that you will also be part of that change. So please remember, ask who made your clothes.